والله يدعو إلى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء إلى صراط مستقيم الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. إن شاء الله I will commence with a short recitation from the Quran for purposes of baraka. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. لقد سمع الله قول الذين قالوا إن الله فقير ونحن أغنياء سنكتب ما قالوا وقتلهم الأنبياء بغير حق ونقول ذوقوا عذاب الحريق ذلك بما قدمت أيديكم وأن الله ليس بظلام للعبيد الذين قالوا إن إن الله عهد إلينا ألا نؤمن لرسول حتى حتى يأتينا بقربان تأكله النار قل قد جاءكم رسل من قبلي بالبينات وبالذي قلتم فلم قتلتموهم إن كنتم صادقين كل نفس ذائقة الموت وإن ما توفون أجوركم يوم القيامة فمن زحزح عن النار وأدخل الجنة وأدخل الجنة فقد فاز وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الغرور صدق الله العظيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Blessings and salutations upon the masterpiece Muhammad ibn Abdullah al-Hashimi al-Qurashi. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and all his companions and may he grant every single one of us blessings and goodness and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our progeny, those to come up to the day of Qiyamah May Allah protect us all and keep us steadfast on the goodness that we have. Ameen. Honored ulama, brothers and sisters in Islam, this evening's topic is death. Your time has come. The system of informing the community of the death of a person is well known to us. We know when the phone rings at a specific time, in the middle of the night, it is either a disaster or it is news of the death of someone. Do you realize that one day Colombo will be buzzing because you have died? Your name 
will be the name that will be circulating. The radio will have your name. Have you thought of it? It is definitely coming. And thereafter, people will gather at your house, expressing condolences to your family. It's happening very soon. And thereafter, people will be preparing your body, how to wash it, who will wash it. It will be washed and enshrouded in the coffin. Your body, it's happening. And thereafter, it will be taken to the place where the janaza prayers are read and they will straighten the rows and try and ensure that there are an odd number of rows and thereafter the Imam after you are placed in the front will say Allahu Akbar and everybody will be behind saying Allahu Akbar for whom? for you it's a reality, it's coming thereafter they will carry you when the prayers are over to your grave which is already located and allocated Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows exactly where you are going to be buried and myself and thereafter we will be taken on the shoulders of people uttering different du'as different supplications Bismillah ala millati rasulillah Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh all these prayers uttered and thereafter we will brought we will be brought to the grave side and placed very carefully into the grave with the right side facing the qibla with the head tilting slightly towards it they will then seal the grave and fill it up with what with soil, with the same soil that was taken from it in order to create that grave. They dug it, now they will fill it back. You are going to be buried, yes, you. And people will cry, your family members will cry, maybe your children, your wife, your mother, your father, if they are alive, or relatives, friends. Some might be cursing you if you owe them money and various other owings we were if we were good people then those around us will cry at the loss and if we were bad people will be happy they will say at last that man is gone at last now there will be no trouble on our street no more the music played so loudly disturbing the neighbors the neighbors will say oh, oh mashallah he died oh subhanallah we don't want that to happen to us and this is why we need to lead our lives in such a way that when we pass away we are dearly missed so people can supplicate a good word and say ya allah grant him paradise that word is enough if a thousand two thousand people have to say that do you think allah is not going to answer the call if that call was asked in a genuine way with a good heart it will be answered at least a few people who have called that call thereafter it is important for us to know what will happen some time will pass and we will be forgotten we will be forgotten nobody will know we existed do you know this we might say no my wife will remember me no she will also go then who will remember you my children will remember me they will also go then who will remember you can you name me 50 people who lived on your street 200 years ago the answer is no they were just as big managers as you are sometimes they were more mightier and stronger with greater physical ability maybe even more wealthy sometimes we don't even know who they were do we the answer is no we have no clue 
who were the people who died 200 years ago maybe there might be a handful of very important people who left a big mark that are mentioned in the history but the bulk nobody will remember me or you no one may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness that is the reality of death death is a door that every single person shall enter we are meant to be concerned about death to the degree that we prepare for it by doing what let me explain how many years are we going to spend after death how many years do we have to live for after that which is I know I spoke about I said death and someone might say why do you say how many years are you going to live for after that the reason is the definition of death for a Muslim is the beginning of the eternal life death is the beginning of a life that will now not end it won't end you died death comes once only you don't die two times you die once and this life that we have now is all a means of gathering whatever we can in terms of goodness so that it can help us there we prepare for our lives here in this world which on average about 60 to 70 years according to the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a'marul ummati ma bayna sittina ila sab'een the average lifespan of the members of my ummah is between 60 and 70 years so we prepare how much do we prepare let me take you through that avenue for a moment when we are born our parents look after us they send us to school to do what so that we can qualify and get a job to do what so that we can live we can get married and have a few children inshallah and have a home and so on have a good life then when we have our children the circle starts again we prepare for them and we are working for them so how many years does it take for us to prepare to live for a few more years on average half our lives are spent in preparation to live the other half up to the age of 25 to 30 man is still at university and graduating and getting postgraduate and doing this and doing that let us be more reasonable and say 25 years old you start earning a nice salary on average so it took us 25 years 25 years of studying 25 years of going to school every other day I say other day because we take out the holidays and so on 25 years of spending money we pay a fee in order to learn a book in order to be able to live another 30 or 40 or 50 years of our lives we will go to university to become an accountant or a lawyer we will study huge books we pay the university we spend sleepless nights is that not correct when the examinations are coming we spend sleepless nights and we prepare so seriously if we are to fail once we will try again and we will pay again and go back again all this is for what we don't even know we might die whilst we are in university we might die before we get our first rupee or dollar we might die before we earn before we marry before we have children we might die before we see any fruit of that effort of ours but we are Muslims we need to understand we are ready to suffer so much to work so hard even after we have learnt our books we go to work at 8 o'clock in the morning come back at 4 o'clock if we are lucky if you are unlucky come back at 5 
And if you are even more unlucky, the traffic will block you. You will be back home at 7 or 8. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us fortunate people. So we work from 8 to 5 on average in order to be able to live the weekend and the life between 5 o'clock and the following 8 o'clock. That's what it is. Have we ever thought of it? But we work so hard in order to get that. Yet we as Muslimin have a life after death. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, death will come. Your time has come already. Because for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, five years, ten years does not make a difference. It will pass like a flash. Ask those who are elderly here, summarize your life. They will give you five sentences, ten sentences, the main crux of their lives. They will tell you it passed like a flash. All of us know the hadith says, يَتَقَارَبُ zaman, Closer to the hour, closer to the, the last time or the last day, time will come closer. It will crumple. Crumple meaning a year will pass by like a month, a month will pass by like a week, a week will pass by like a day, and a day will pass by like an hour, and hour will pass by like a minute. Today, we have got to that stage. Before you know it, it is 2011. Few years ago, it was 1999. I'm sure most of us recall that. 1999. There was a big deal made of Y2K and so on. We are already 11 years down the line. 10 years gone. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the understanding. Time is ticking. But the preparation is what is more important. Islam views death as a gift for those who have been doing good. The Prophet, peace be upon him, says, the gift of a believer who has been working hard, who has been doing good deeds, is death. Because there is no point in a person working all day, collecting their salaries, not being able to withdraw that cash to use that salary. When Allah promises you that if you read your salah, you will have so much reward. If you give your zakah, you will have so much reward. When you say good words to your spouse, you, are, you have so much reward. When you solve problems, you have a huge reward. When you smile at others and speak well with people and be of help and assistance, you will have a massive reward. Where are we going to see all these rewards? We will see parts of this reward in this world. But the bulk of it, you need to get to the stage in order to collect your reward. What is the stage? When a child works all year, at the end of the year, they are informed you are winning a prize. They get very happy. And the prize giving will be held at the school on this day at this time. They will have to go to the school at that day at the time to attend the prize giving to shake the hand of the guest of honor and to get that prize. Without going to the prize giving, if we were to leave the school before that, we are not going to get a prize. So in order for us to get our prize of the work and the effort we've been engaged in for so many years, we need to first get to the prize giving, which is through death. When you die, you will see all the gold and silver coins that which is more than that. Why do I give the example of gold and silver coins? Because sometimes in my lectures I say that you see the prayer that we pray five times a day. If we were to see the reward of it, we would remain in prayer throughout the day. Say the reward was one ounce gold coin for every raka'ah that you read. Though it is more than that. But let me just give you an example. If the reward was one ounce gold coin for every raka'ah or unit of prayer that you read and as we read the raka'ah we find one gold coin next to us and our heap is heaping i think for dhuhr we would make a total of 40 or 50 or 60 raka'at and at the end of the day we would say i have collected 300 gold coins today just through salah Wallahi, what we get with Allah is much more than the gold coins. Why then do we find ourselves not even fulfilling the salah? 
Look at us. This is an encouragement. When we talk on death, we speak of everything good. And we remind ourselves to abstain from everything bad. Because then our death will be easy. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for us. So when we get to the life after death, we will be given all our gifts. And this is why the gift of a true believer is death. This evening I'd like to look at what the Quran says. What the Quran says about death. There is a verse that I read moments ago before you. And I'm sure most of us picked it up. Every soul shall taste death. Everyone is going to taste it. Every single one. Nobody can say no. Myself? No, no, no. I'm very healthy. Not me. The healthiest of the healthy, they go. When your time is up, you will go. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that and the verses are found in more than one place in the Quran. In Surah Ali Imran, in Surah Al-Anbiya and in Surah Al-Ankabut. The same verse is repeated again. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us why he created death and why he created life in the first place. Allah says in Surah Al-Mulk, الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا وهو العزيز الغفور. It is He, Allah, who has created death and life in order to test you who from amongst you has better deeds. For indeed, Allah is all powerful. Or most forgiving. Look at how he says all powerful, most forgiving. So firstly Allah tells us subhanahu wa ta'ala that I have created death and life in order to test the quality of your deeds. When you are fulfilling salah, fulfill it properly. Some of us, we have been reading salah for 20 years, 10 years, 30 years. We don't even know what is the meaning of Samiallahu liman hamida. And we hear it every day. And we say it every day so many times for so many years. Is that fair? When we are prepared to study a book of accountancy so big and we are prepared to pay in order to study it, why can we not study the book that will take us to heaven? And the words that will definitely result in our entry into heaven. And we don't even need to pay for that. And they are repeated on a daily basis. If I were to tell you that, you know, I, we need a payment of, we need a payment of 500 US dollars a year in order for you to have a huge palace here in Colombo. You will look at me and say that is very cheap. I think it won't be a palace. Let's go and see it first. Let's go and see it first. But we will be ready to make a payment. Every month we will say, cut it off my salary automatically. I don't want to lose the house. Why then are we not prepared to make payments via good deeds for our palace in Jannah, in paradise? Every time you abstain from a sin, you tell Allah, speak to Allah. Ya Allah, I wanted to, my nafs wanted to, or my soul wanted to commit this sin. But because of you, I didn't count it as a payment towards my paradise. In paradise, you will get much greater than whatever you wanted to commit. Someone wanted to steal and they abstained because they feared Allah. Allah will give them better than what they were going to steal. Someone wanted to commit adultery. And they abstained because of Allah. Allah will give them much better than that. So everything we do is a payment for the Akhirah. And sometimes it is default. When a person does not make a payment for a house, what happens? They are penalized. Sometimes they might lose that property. So the same applies if we are to commit a sin. And we are not to make the payments we are meant to be making. Like we abstain from one of the five salah, our payment is short. 
So what will happen? We may be penalized. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, still, I have mercy on those who repent if they change their bad ways. It's never too late. Late is not a word for a Muslim. For as long as you are alive, for as long as you are breathing, for as long as Allah has given you life, it is not too late to turn to him. Ya Allah, forgive us. Ya Allah, grant us a new beginning. Ya Allah, grant us a life full of obedience. I mean. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa al azizul ghafoor. Allah is powerful, which means He can punish you, but He is for forgiving. With the ability, He still will forgive. You know, when there is a big man who has slapped a small boy, the small boy has to say, Thank you, uncle. Why? Because he knows there is nothing I can do here. I have no ability to retaliate. But when the small boy slaps a big uncle, and the uncle says, little boy, I am able to crush you to pieces, but no problem, I forgive you. Look at this. I can lift you up and throw you from this corner to that corner. But don't worry, I forgive you. Now you will say, this uncle has very good qualities. What about another uncle who says, little boy, I am able to do all that. Not only am I forgiving you, here is a sweet. Don't do that again. We will say, oh, this uncle is even greater. Wallahi, these are examples of this world. The example of Allah. He is able to destroy us here and now because of the sins we have committed. But Allah says, no, I will forgive you and I will still give you goodness in the world. Ya Allah, grant us a turning point. Ya Allah, grant us the understanding of your mercy. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how death will come to you anywhere. There is no place you can hide. Not at all. There is no place that I can hide or you can hide. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Nisa, Aynama takunu yudrikkum ul-mawtu wa law kuntum fi burujim mushayyada. No matter where you are, death will come to you even if you are in well-built tall palaces. These towers, you want to be in a nice palace which is well-built. Allah says death will still come to you no matter how hard you try that it doesn't. And in Surah Al-Ahzab, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala words it differently. He says, Say, running away will never help you if you think you can run away from death. You will never be able to run away from death or from being killed if that is written against you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that understanding. So this shows that it is something certain. No matter how strong we think we are, tomorrow the news will come. This man is no more. No more. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in Surah Nuh, Definitely the prescribed time of Allah, when it comes, it won't be delayed. Your expiry date is written. You know how you get various commodities you buy, it says expiry date. Sometimes people eat it even after expiry, mashallah. Like I noticed many years back the water, I don't know if the people will agree with me. Water did not have expiry date before. Now they have water also has expiry date. And then there is something else called best before. So one brother was having water which was after the date. I told him, brother, this water, the date is over. He told me, no, best before does not mean worst after. It means it's okay even after that it is not as good but you can have it. So that is the difference between expiry date and best before date. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness with us. There is expiry date and if you are lucky you have a best before date. 
Let me explain it to you. Expiry meaning the date of death. The time of death is written. It's not going to change. But if we are lucky and Allah has given us a long life, He says that some of you, I have given you long life in order to understand, in order to turn. Some of us, Allah says, some of you, I take you away at young age. Young age, I will take you away. It is my mercy. When Allah knows that it is best for you to go, you will go. That is why we should never be upset when our child has gone at a very young age. Maybe tender age of 5 or 10 or 20 or something. Young child is gone. Don't be angry with Allah. It is the best thing that could have happened for the child and for you. Allah's knowledge is vast. So Allah says, Some of you, I take them to old age where they are weak. And some are so weak. Allah wants to create a situation where those around the old person are given an opportunity to serve the old person. We use the word khidmah, to do the khidmah or to serve the old person. If there were no old people who were needing wheelchairs and assistance to walk, we would not have an act of worship known as assisting the elderly. So as a mercy for me and you who are young, Allah has kept old people who sometimes cannot walk to watch what we do. When we see them, do we help them? When they are our fathers, do we treat them in a way that we are proud of assisting them? Sometimes our parents might need our assistance to go to the toilet. How do we treat them when they treated us, taking us to the toilet for two, three years when we were babies? That is Allah's gift. So Allah knows when people are going to die. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made mention of this, that when the time of Allah comes, it is not going to be delayed. It is not going to be laid, delayed not by one minute this way or that way. Allah knows when the time is up. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Nobody dies according to their own will. Allah is the one who has written when you are going to die. So even someone who says, I'm going to kill myself, may Allah protect us. Suicide is the biggest sin that you can commit against life. To take one's life is disbelief in Allah. One narration, the Prophet ﷺ says, those who have committed suicide will be punished to the degree that they will continue tasting that pain until the day they are resurrected. And after that, they will be thrown into hellfire. May Allah forgive us. But we are not allowed to tell a person or whose family member has committed suicide. Some people are not well. They are mentally disturbed. They, their condition of the mind is not good. So you cannot say this man is going to hell and point at him. No, you can't do that. Only Allah knows the condition upon which that person died. However, we speak about the sin at large. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala therefore says, وَمَا كَانَ لِنَفْسٍ أَن تَمُوتَ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ كِتَابًا مُؤَجَّلًا It is not up to a person to die. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who decides when they will die. He has written it and it is a fixed time. He delays a person up to a moment. And this is why we are not meant to be wishing for death in order to run away from our problems. Someone has a lot of problems. Those problems are a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to go through these tests asking Allah to help us. Let me give you the example of school. When you go to school, the more tests you have, the higher the qualification. I think I said that the last time I was in Colombo. When you go to school, the more tests you have and the more questions you have and the more difficult the questions, the higher the qualification. When you have a grade 7 test 
or an O level test or an A level test according to the questions you will be able to determine what test it is the bigger the question the bigger the qualification so Allah tests us in order for us to have a bigger palace in heaven he puts more difficulties so there is a person who is bankrupt and then suddenly his leg is amputated and then he loses his wife and then he loses his job these are all tests from Allah one after the other do not wish to die it is like a person who sees the O level paper and says there are too many questions here there are very long questions here so let me walk out of the hall you paid for it you need to write at least you need to attempt you will get either A, B or C and if you fail you can repeat Sometimes Allah tests us two times with the same test because the first time we failed. So the second time he says, I want you to pass. So we are not allowed to wish for death. Allah says, and this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has spoken about the others, meaning people of the book. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they used to claim that no, life after death is only for us. Allah says, قُلْ إِن كَانَتْ لَكُمُ الدَّاءُ الْآخِرَةُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ خَالِصَةً مِّن دُونِ النَّاسِ فَتَمَنَّوُ الْمَوْتَ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ If you are claiming that the life after death only belongs to you O people of the book then wish that you would die if you are truthful Allah says you will never wish to die but there is a narration of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam wherein he says a believer should never wish to die in order to run away from his problems if someone says it is best for allah to take me when he knows it is best for me to go that is a dua that was made by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he used to say oh allah keep me alive for as long as you know that it is better for me to be living and oh Allah, take me away when you know it is better for me to be taken away. That is the dua I should be making and you should be making. All of us. Sometimes the young, they just look at me and say, you mean we should also be making that dua? The answer is yes. I know you are young, but you say, ya Allah, when you know it is better for me to go, take me away. Because the crux is the life after death, not this life. This life is a test. Allah is watching you to see how the quality of your life is and how you improve the quality of the lives of others you try your best to help others to assist others that is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's meaning that is the reason why he has created us as i read the verse then we have allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informing us that we should not die in the wrong condition i'm sure many of us know this verse off by heart allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ حَقَّ تُقَاتِهِ وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ O you who believe be conscious of Allah in a manner that he is meant to be conscious of or that you are meant to be conscious of him and do not die except in the condition that you are a Muslim don't die in any other condition except in the condition of submission what does that mean I don't know when I'm going to die you don't know when you are going to die so it means I need to lead my daily life in submission to what Allah has instructed so that if death overtakes me at any moment, I die a submitter to Allah known as a Muslim. And this is why committing sins very dangerous. A person who commits adultery, for example, the hadith says, لا يزني الزاني يحين يزني وهو مؤمن a person who commits adultery during the act they are not believers between them and Allah 
They cannot call themselves believers. Imagine if someone dies in that act. And this thought must cross us. It is normal and natural for us to think that I might die today, I might die tomorrow. It is normal and healthy to think that. And sometimes we might think I might lose my son today or my father today or my wife today or my husband today or tomorrow. It is normal to think that sometimes I might lose them so that we can appreciate them and we can please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because death is not what is that scary. But what is more scary is to say they've all gone. But where did they go? That is the question. They, everybody went. Whoever died is gone. They are not here. But the the question that is people fear is where did they go well if you want to go to a good place you prepare from now it's not too late so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how close death has come my time and your time is so close listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah al-anbiya وهم في غفلة معرضون. The time of reckoning of the people has come so close, but they are walking away in oblivion. They are walking in the other direction, forgetting. They don't even realize the time for accounting, which means we are going to die and Allah is going to take account of our deeds. That time is very close. It has come so close. And Allah says, people are walking in the other direction. You see the beauty of not revealing the date of expiry for any one of us to us is so that we can be good throughout. If I knew my exact time of death and you knew your exact time of death, we might have been bad people sinning if we knew we are going to die at 70. Then come 69, we make salam to everyone. I'm going now, brother. I'm going, sister. Look, forgive me everything. What I've done, Ya Allah, forgive me. Like you are going for hajj. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept the hajj of the hajis. Those who have come today, those who have come back all these days. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them all forms of goodness. And may Allah accept their hajj and make it a means of blessing for all of us. Because they definitely made dua for the country and for the city and for all of us. We ask Allah to accept those du'as. Amen. So this is why Allah kept it a secret. No one knows when they are going to die. Because if we knew, we would not be good people. As I explained. I was saying moments ago, that if we are lucky, we might have a best before date. What does that mean? When we, we don't know our death, I told you expiry date is written, but sometimes Allah gives us a long life. When we get to 60, we know now we are nearing the end. We know. So we become better people, naturally. This is why the hadith says that the worst person is an old man who still commits sins. Because he has no shame that I have given you life so long, you know you are dying, your leg is paining, your, 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 your knees are sore, you can't even walk properly and still you want to go and commit this sin. May Allah forgive us all. Ya Allah, grant us a beginning, a new beginning. Ya Allah, grant us a new leaf, forgive us, grant us paradise. Make us strong, Ya Allah. So, when the person gets to 70, they should know that the time of expiry is gone. Now they are living with best before. Why? Because now they cannot read Salah the way they used to read before. Sometimes we cannot sit down on the floor. Sometimes we cannot go down in sujood because of our health condition. Sometimes we want to go for Umrah. We cannot make as much tawaf as we wanted to. So our energies are lacking. Our health is gone. So what happens? We need to realize that there are certain items it is better you do it before a certain date. Hence, I said best before. When you have your health, Wallahi, it is better to use it before it is taken. When you have wealth, it is better to use it before it is taken. When you have free time, it is better to use it correctly before it is taken. Here we are speaking of correct use, good use. When you have life, it is better to use it before death overtakes you. And so on. 
We ask Allah to open our doors. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about Tawbah. Remember moments ago I told you that if we knew our date of expiry, it would not be exciting for us to do good deeds. Everyone would say, okay, I'm waiting for a moment and this is what it is. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us and he says, وَلَيْسَتِ التَّوْبَةُ لِلَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ السَّيِّئَاتِ حَتَّى إِذَا حَضَرَ أَحَدَهُمُ الْمَوْتُ قَالَ إِنِّي تُبْتُ الْآنِ Repentance is not for a person who continues to commit sin until they see the angels of death coming to them. Then they say, now I surrender. Now I surrender. Now I am seeking forgiveness. Allah says repentance is not for those type of people. Look at Fir'aun. What happened to him? The Pharaoh of Egypt. What happened to him? He knew he was not the God. He used to tell people, Ma alim tulakum min ilahin ghayri. I don't know any God for you besides me. I am the God. Ana rabbukumul a'la. I am the highest God here. That's what Firaun used to say. And inside his heart, he knew that he also went to the toilet. He also had stomach problem. He also had, he was in need of someone above him. He knew he, he was also a human being. He knew everything. Then when he drowned, and as the soul was being taken away by the angels of death, he says, Oh, now I want to accept the God of Moses and Harun. Musa and Harun, Moses and Aaron, may peace be upon them. Now I want to accept. He says, Tubutul ana. Allah sub He says, now I am making, re re you know, repentance. And Allah says, Al ana. You want to turn now? Now you want to turn. Waqad asayta qablu. And in the past you were very, very disobedient. وَكُنْتَ مِنَ الْمُفْسِدِينَ And you were from amongst those who were corrupt, spreading wrong, doing wrong and spreading wrong. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us all to say, let us not wait for death, then repent. It will be too late. إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى يَقْبِلُ تَوْبَةَ الْعَبْدِ مَا لَمْ يُغَرْغِرْ the hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Allah accepts the repentance of anybody for as long as they have not got to the point of gargara. Gargara meaning the soul coming out of the body. When it gets to a certain point, it, it is known as gargara. The last point, now we have seen the angels of death too late. You cannot repent at that time. It won't help you. We ask Allah to forgive us now. Ya Allah, grant us a beginning. Ya Allah, grant us a new beginning. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about those who will regret. I told you moments ago that it's important for us not to waste time when we want to turn to Allah. I will turn to Allah today, tomorrow, today, tomorrow. That's not good enough. Now I'm turning to Allah. Forgive me. Whatever bad we were planning, cancel it now. Allah knows we were going to sit here and listen to this talk. Allah knows it. Cancel the bad we were planning now. Open the heart towards goodness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about those who have been doing bad. Allah says when death comes to that person, he will say, Oh Allah, Oh Allah, send me back. Send me back. I want to do good deeds. Then I will come back just now. Just send me back. I want to do good deeds and I will come back just now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that is too late. That is too late. وَأَنذِرِ النَّاسَ يَوْمَ يَأْتِيهِمُ الْعَذَابُ فَيَقُولُ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا رَبَّنَا رَبَّنَا أَخِّرْنَا إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ قَرِيبٍ 
Allah says in Surah Ibrahim, warn the people of the time that will come to them when the oppressors or the wrongdoers will say, Oh Allah, send us back for a short time. We just want to quickly do good deeds and we will come back. We want to do good deeds and come back. The Quran says in Surah Al-Mu'min, in Surah Al-Mu'minun, إِنَّهَا كَلِمَةٌ هُوَ قَائِلُهَا No, it is just a word that this person is uttering. In one place Allah says, وَلَوْ رُدُّوا لَعَادُوا لِمَا نُهُ عَنْهُ Even if we sent them back, they would still do the same deeds again and come back with the same deeds. So Allah says, purify your deeds from now. Ya Allah, grant us pure deeds. Grant us deeds that will make us easily enter into Jannah. Ya Allah, grant us entry into Jannah through your mercy. Ya Allah, the day you take us away, take us away with goodness. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks also about how death comes to a person. You see, those who are good people, they don't really feel much. When death comes to them, they have a pain known as sakarat, the pangs of death. The pangs of death. That pain is cushioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He makes it easy for them. And there are some whom these pangs are so bad. The hadith describes a bad person, the evil person. When the soul is taken out of the body, it is like a rope full of thorns and nails being pulled out of the throat. How it would feel? Just picture it for a moment. And that rope is being pulled and tugged and continue. And that is the feeling of the pangs of death of an evil person. Whereas a good person who has been doing good deeds, fulfilling their salah, helping others, abstaining from sin, constantly repenting to Allah. Allah says for that person, their pang of death will be similar to a hair being taken out of the throat. Look at the difference here. One is a hair being taken out. And the other one is a rope with nails and with thorns and so on being tugged out of the throat with this person suffocating. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the easy one. Ya Allah, the day you take us away, make it easy for us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how easy it is when a person dies in their sleep. If someone dies in their sleep, the, the pangs are very minimal. That is also a gift of Allah to die in your sleep. It's a gift. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says when a person is sleeping, the soul is less connected to the body than when they are awake. Do you know sleep cannot be explained by anybody? Nobody in this dunya can explain to you what the details of sleep and how you dream and so on. Nobody, never, they can't. There is no machine to gauge your dream. Imagine if there was a mirror they had to put in front of your head and they would be able to see what you are dreaming. People would create movie houses. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. But it's the qudra of Allah. Nobody can see what you are dreaming. No one can explain. Otherwise, if people could, then the scientists would tell you, have this tablet, you have a dream of green uh, forest and so on. Have this tablet, you dream of motor vehicles. Have that tablet, you will dream of big houses and so on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the understanding of His greatness. Allah says, I know what you don't know. The same applies death. Nobody can explain to you where we were five years before we were born. Ask yourself, where was I five years before I was born? Can anyone explain? Can any machine take you back and tell you this is where you were? What about one year after you die? Where are you? Can anyone explain? Nobody. We, we have to take revelation in order to explain to us where we will be. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs us. I was speaking about the pangs of death. When we are sleeping, the, the soul and the body are connected, but not in the same way that they are connected whilst we are awake. And Allah says, if your death is written in your sleep, I don't send your soul back into the body, I take it away. 
And if your death is not written whilst you are asleep, Allah says, as you wake up or you are awakened, I send that soul back into your body. It plugs in once again properly. What is the soul and how it operates? No doctor can inform you. Not the rocket scientist can tell you. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a small bit of knowledge. Very small bit. So this is Allah. Allah yatawaffa al-anfus hina mawtiha wallati lam tamut fi manamiha Allah says Allah causes the extraction of the soul when a person dies and he causes the extraction of a soul to a different level when a person is sleeping فَيُمْسِكُ الَّتِي قَضَى عَلَيْهَا الْمَوْتَ وَيُرْسِلُ الْأُخْرَى إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ مُسَمَّى Allah says, so when a person is sleeping, we hold the soul. If death is written, we keep it. And if it is not, we send it back for a period of time. That is in the Quran. And I've just read for you the verse. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how the person who is good will receive the angels. When the person is good and is passing away, they will see good angels dressed in white clothing or dressed in beautiful clothing come to them. They will be happy. You find people smiling as they are dying. It happens. This is because when you lead a good life, you die a good death. The angels who come to get your soul, they will come with such goodness and they will remove the soul with such precision and with so much ease. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. The angels who come to the good, they will greet them with salamun alaykum as they take the soul and they will inform them that for you is Jannah. You are going to paradise, mashallah. What about the opposite? May Allah protect us from that. Oh, Allahu Akbar. The descriptions are many in the Quran. Allah says, the angels of death who come to the evil people, they will come like monsters. And this person will be frightened, not knowing where to go, how to run, where to run. It is too late. And they will extract with so much pain the soul from this person. It is described in a very, very vivid manner. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. It is reported that sometimes people will also begin to beat themselves and hit their, their bodies and so on as they are dying and stamping and they won't know and they are kicking like the kicking of a dying animal. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to us. Wallahu yad'u ila dar salam wa yahdi man yasha'u ila sirat mustaqeem. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks also about how we will be returned to the soil. This is very important for us to know. Minha khalaqnaakum wa fiha nu'idukum wa minha nukhrijukum taratan ukhra. Allah says we created you from soil. We will return you into the soil and we will resurrect you back into the soil. The system of burial that Islam has is the best. Nobody can compete with it. It is the cheapest, most effective, most hygienic, most humane, and the most workable on the globe. Others, subhanallah, what they do, they spend lots of money preparing the body with the best watch and the best suit, and the best shoes and they buy a coffin made of you know very expensive wood and they buy locks and so on locking in order to ensure that when adab comes it remains allah protect us 
So they lock it properly and they will create a ceremony, keep it for so long. We are taught that no, the body, we are created from soil. To honor man, don't wait until his body releases a stench, a smell. No, bury him as soon as possible. There is no time limit or time frame in Islam that says one hour or two hours. But as soon as possible. Sometimes as soon as possible is two hours. Sometimes it is one day. Depending on what as soon as possible is for that particular janaza or that particular deceased person. And we are meant to return them into the soil as soon as we can. As honor and respect. We wash them nicely as though we are having a bath ourselves the same way we wash the dead. That is in a sentence. Obviously there are details, but that is in a sentence. The idea, we use soap as well. We will wash the body, clean the body nicely. We wrap it into white pieces of cloth, put it into the, so into the soil and we have a gap. A gap for what? For the oxygen. Yes, the angels of death are going to come and question and so on. That is all part of our belief. The angels of death will come and question, Who is your Rabb? What is your Deen? Who is this man, Muhammad? Or who is your Nabi? And you will have to answer. You will only be able to answer through practice, through fulfilling. You might memorize the answers here, but if you did not follow, you won't know everything because you are not going to use this same tongue to answer. It is Allah's Qudra that will make you answer in a way that Allah knows. Allah is the only one who knows exactly how that is going to happen. We believe whatever we are taught. So the method of burial, we return to the soil. Why do we not cremate? It's a question some people ask. Why don't you cremate? I have a few discrepancies, a few questions. Firstly, the body cannot feel after death unless Allah wants it to feel. The body or a person cannot hear after death unless Allah wants the person to hear. When you go and say, Assalamu alaikum ahla diyari min al mu'mineen, Allah wants them to hear, they will hear it. But the function of the ears that they had during their life is over. A dead person, when Allah wants them to see, they will see. But the functions of the eyes that they had whilst they were alive are over. How they see, only Allah knows. How they hear, only Allah knows. So we need to understand it is possible. It is possible for Allah to make someone feel the burning after death in the form of cremation. But maybe they can't tell you that I'm screaming, stop burning me, I can feel this fire. Is there a possibility? The answer is yes, there is a probability. Maybe Allah's kudra, Allah's power, He can make someone feel. Why take that risk? Number one. Number two, when we burn a human being, the person becomes ash. And ash does not mix with the soil. It will always remain ash because it has burned at a higher temperature with a higher pressure. So ash will not mix with the soil. But if you put a person into a grave and leave some room for some oxygen and then you close it after some time, it will disintegrate into the soil completely. Subhanallah, completely. So if someone is cremated, they are not going to be returned to the soil. But if someone is not cremated and they are buried, they will be soon returned to the soil. And we won't put a wooden box unless the condition of the soil requires us to put something more firm. Like there are certain places in the UK and so on where they are required to put something more firm. Religiously, we will only put the shroud, the kafan. It will go in. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goodness. We ask Him to make it easy for us. 
It is a very great sunnah to go out to attend janazah, whether you know the man or not, or the woman or not. For the men folk, it is a very big sunnah to go out and attend salatul janazah. The hadith says, whoever goes to fulfill or that prayer of janazah for, for someone, they will have the reward of one qirat. One qirat is a mountain, one big mountain, full of what? Something more valuable than gold. Why? Why is there such a big reward? How many janazas have we attended? I think many, many. The whole idea is for us to imagine that it is myself in that casket. That is the idea. That is when I will benefit correctly. When we attend janazah, don't just attend and say, I'm making dua for this man and that's it. And I've made dua and now I'm going. You will have a complete reward when you imagine that you yourself are in there. You will come back a totally changed person. One mountain of reward to fulfill salah. Another mountain of reward to go to the graveside and then to help to bury or even to stand around. Why? Because again, put yourself in the grave. Imagine it is you and they are going to bury you like I started the talk. If you think every time you visit the graveyard to bury someone that it is you who went, your life will change. You will not be able to commit a sin. You won't. That is why death is a gift of Allah. Because it reminds us that we are going, we don't have room to sin. Allah will grant us the goodness in the akhirah, in the life after death. Imagine if death was not there. If death was not there, one wonders how people would go about on this earth and what, what they would do. There would be no accountability, nothing. Besides to the policeman here and there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. And that is true. You know, I was traveling in one country, in South Africa in fact. And the speed traps that they have, you know, big people, when I say big people, I mean wealthy people. They see 60. From 120, they break. They will not cross that camera flash strip at 61, no, but at 59 or 60. And I thought to myself, I said, you know, imagine everybody comes to a standstill and everybody breaks. Just sit and watch. You see red lights of brake lights. You know, if you are at the back, you witness all the brake lights. Everybody's braking when you come to the speed trap. They are worried because the fine is very heavy. Fine is very heavy. I think 2,000 rands, 3,000 rands in South Africa. And I was thinking to myself, Subhanallah, we have taqwa. Taqwa, I want to use the word taqwa. Of a speed trap, but we don't have taqwa of Allah. We are so conscious if we fear Allah, half of what we fear, the speed trap, the problem is solved. I don't know if you are understanding the example I'm giving here. Sometimes we fear worldly things, one, two thousand rands. What about Allah? We are crossing His limit. This is a speed limit. Allah also has limits. But we cross His limits at 240 kilometers, no problem. And with the limit of the dunya, we want to be at 59 when it is at 60. Why? We are worried about one day imprisonment or 2,000, 5,000 rupee, maybe 20,000, 30,000, 100,000, chalo, 1 million rupee, no problem. I'm not saying drive fast, but I'm saying think. We are ready to do this for this. We are not ready to do that for that when it is more important. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of another very, very good example. Do you know, every time the reign of mercy is mentioned in the Quran, immediately after that Allah says, that is how I will resurrect you. This is something we need to learn from the Quran. Every time Allah speaks of rain, and He says it lands on or the rain comes, falls down onto the land that is dry. And then don't you see that the dry dead land after the rain falls on it becomes green? Don't you see that? That is the question Allah asks. Allah says, well, 
That is how we will resurrect you after you have died and decomposed into the soil. That is how we will resurrect you. There are many verses where Allah speaks about the rain. And then He says, every time He says, That is how we are going to resurrect you. That is how we will be taking the dead people out in order for you to be reminded. That is how we will be resurrecting you every time Allah says that. Now there is a hadith reported by Abu Huraira radiallahu an. He says that when the trumpet will be blown, there will fall rain. There will be the falling of certain type of rain. Now before I speak of the type of rain, let me inform you or remind you of something else. In this world, we have one type of rain, generally, which means H2O comes from the heavens. Am I right? It comes from the clouds. Normally, it's in the form of H2O, unless you are living in one of the developed countries like Britain, where they have acid rain because of whatever they are emitting and so on. But generally, you have rain. And the fruits that we have grow. The different fruits grow. Every fruit has a different seed. So the apple seed you plant here, next to it you plant the banana seed, next to it you plant, for example, the strawberry plant, you will find a plant of strawberry here, you will find an apple tree here, and a banana tree here. You will find it, but the rain was one, the seed was different. That is Allah's power. On the day of Qiyamah, or after Qiyamah, or sh no, sorry, before Qiyamah, after the world comes to an end, when the trumpet is blown, there will be a different type of rain. The hadith says, it will be thick white rain, similar to the semen of man. rijal. Thick white rain will fall. For a period of 40 days or 40 months or 40 years, it just says for a period of 40, but it doesn't explain whether it is days or whatever, according to us, for a period of time. And people will grow like plants grow onto the mahshar. Did we know that? The Quran says that. People will grow. People will grow. And what will be the seed? It is known as ajbu dhanab. Ajbu dhanab means the bottom most part of your spine. It is a small conical-like bone which does not decompose generally when the body is decomposed completely. That remains or a small portion of it remains. But even if someone burns it and crushes it, no problem. Allah says we will gather it together. No problem. We will bring it together. So people will grow. This is why Allah says whenever you see the rain, think of life after death you will also grow in a similar way and we will grow until we are 18 meters tall each one is 60 feet depending on the size of those feet we are saying on average 18 meters but very tall very very tall and all those who have passed away post puberty will be resurrected with a body of the age of 33 with a body of the age of 33 so tall big huge mashallah age of 33 stops growing now you answer Allah ma minkum min ahadin illa sayukallimuhu rabbuhu laysa baynahu wa baynahu turjuman every single one of you is going to speak directly to your creator without any intermediary between with no barrier and with no translator nothing you will talk to Allah and you will answer to him you won't see him yet not yet no but you will talk to him and answer to him to see Allah you need to go to paradise first it is a gift for those who have believed and done good deeds so this is also part of what Allah speaks about in the Quran, death. And this is why it is important for us to make dua. The Quran teaches us 
to pray to Allah. Ya Allah, give us a good death. Ya Allah, the day you take us away, take us away in a condition that you are pleased with us. Grant us ease when you take us away. It is important for us to make dua for ourselves and our progeny and our offspring. And it is important for us to constantly mention death. Akthiru. The hadith says, increase the remembrance of that which destroys all desires. You know, you desire to do this and to do that and to do that. Then you say, but I'm not well. Prepare for it. It is also important to write your will. Important preparation for death is to write your will. Let people know how much you owe others and what others owe you and where things are and what to do and what not to do and so on. And it is prohibited to write a will according to our own fancies. We need to learn what the Quran says and what Allah says about drawing up a will. There is a specific way of doing it. Let us learn it. Like I said, we are Muslims. We have studied many, many books. We have read novels, but some of us have not read the Quran yet. We don't know what the Quran says. Why? It is about time we open the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It leads us to the hadith. The Quran tells us about the importance of the hadith. If we understand the Arabic language and understand the message of the Quran, the Quran leads us to the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is the explanation of the Quran derived from the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how important it is also to visit the graveyards for the men. For the men, it is extremely important. Oh, amassing wealth has kept you occupied and it has led you astray. It has kept you preoccupied, amassing wealth. Everyone is trying to earn, earn. Today, if we have a man standing at that door and we know that the first person to touch his hand, for example, will be given one million rupees. I think everybody will try to rush there. They will leave the people who are, you know, in the front. They will leave everybody aside and they will say, let me go. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us this understanding. When we visit the graveyard, it is important for us to know that there was a time when it was prohibited to visit graveyards. The hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Kuntu nahaytukum an ziyarati al-quburi ala fazuruha fa innaha tudhakkirukum al-akhirah. I used to prohibit you from visiting the graveyards. Why? Because people used to worship the graveyards and worship the graves. So that is why it was prohibited initially. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, I used to prohibit you from visiting the graveyards. But now you may visit. For definitely, it should remind you of the Akhirah. So that is the purpose of visiting the graveyard. To remind us, to say, I am also going there. Whenever we go to the graveyard, it's important that we realize this and we understand it. There are many other aspects of death that we can speak about. But I'd like to end with one very, very important aspect. Allah is the creator and he has everything besides him is the created creation. Allah, the creator, everything besides him, creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not die and he does not die. He is everlasting. Inna Allah hayyun la yamut. Allah is alive. He will never die. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Furqan, وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى الْحَيِّ الَّذِي لَا يَمُوتُ وَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِهِ وَكَفَى بِهِ بِذُنُوبِ عِبَادِهِ بَصِيرًا Lay your trust in the one who is all alive. He does not die. The one who is all watchful over the deeds of all his creation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who lay our trust in him. 
This evening we've spoken on this topic of death. I hope it has benefited yourselves and myself. The bare minimum it should do for every one of us is to help us to prepare for the day we are going. And to help us realize that death, as much as we should be fearing it, we should also be looking forward to it if we do good deeds. Because a person who does good deeds, they then wish to meet Allah. مَن كَانَ يَرْجُو لِقَاءَ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّ أَجَلَ اللَّهِ لَآتِ Whoever is wishing to meet Allah, whoever wants to meet Allah, Allah says, don't worry, the prescribed time is very near. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a meeting with Him. Ya Allah, grant us the goodness of meeting you, Ya Allah. اللهم صل على محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وسلم تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا الله يا الله you are the creator you made us يا الله you created absolutely everything you are omnipotent يا الله يا الله you are the creator nourisher cherisher sustainer provider you are in absolute control of every single aspect of our existence يا الله we worship you, Ya Allah. We put our head on the ground for you, Ya Allah. We bow for you. We prostrate for you. We read our salah for you, Ya Allah. We adore you, Ya Allah. We worship you, Ya Allah. We are so weak and helpless. Forgive us, Ya Allah. Grant us forgiveness, Ya Allah. Make us the best of people, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, help us to say good words from our tongues. Protect our tongues from bad words, Ya Allah. Make us steadfast on our salah. Make us dress appropriately, Ya Allah. Help us to come closer to you as the days pass, Ya Allah. Protect us from turning away. Ya Allah, protect us from shaitan, the devil. Ya Allah, keep him far away from us and keep us far away from him, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, grant our parents paradise, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, those of us whose parents are alive, Ya Allah, make us from those who can serve them. Those of us whose parents have passed away, forgive our parents, Ya Allah. Grant them the loftiest ranks of paradise. Ya Allah, make us happy people, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, grant us contentment and happiness and bliss. Protect us from ill health and bad health, Ya Allah. Give us good health, Ya Allah. You are the owner of health. Ya Allah, grant us cure from the sicknesses we have. Those sicknesses we know about and those we don't know about, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, make our offspring champions of this deen, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, guide us to the straight path and keep us on the straight path. Ya Allah, guide us to the straight path and keep us on the straight path. Ya Allah, make us an asset to our family members, to our communities and to our country at large, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, help us to be kind to the Muslims and to the non-Muslims, Ya Allah. Help us to be helpful to one and all. Help us portray the good image of Islam to the entire globe, Ya Allah. Use us to serve this deen, Ya Allah. Use us to promote Islam, Ya Allah. Help us so that we can leave our bad habits, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we promise you that we will not sin, Ya Allah, knowingly. Ya Allah, wherever we have sinned and erred, forgive us, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we promise to turn, Ya Allah, today, Ya Allah. Here and now, we have turned to you, Ya Allah. We leave our bad ways and habits. We promise to dress appropriately, Ya Allah. We promise to abstain from listening to music that is detrimental to our ears, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we promise to abstain from all that which is bad. Ya Allah, we promise to abstain from all bad habits, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, help us to abstain from all bad habits, Ya Allah. Those who are drinking, help them to abstain from drinking alcohol, Ya Allah. Those on drugs, help them, Ya Allah, to leave that filthy habit, Ya Allah, which is the scourge of the age, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, protect our children from it. Ya Allah, those who are involved in alcohol, Ya Allah, in all forms of intoxicants, in drugs, Ya Allah, in gambling, in adultery, Ya Allah, in all forms of sinning, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, keep us away from all that, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, forgive those who have been engaged in it. Ya Allah, keep them away from it, Ya Allah. Safeguard their children and their offspring, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, make our homes happy homes, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, grant us every form of goodness, Ya Allah. Accept this gathering of ours, Ya Allah. Guide those who are astray, Ya Allah. Safeguard our women, Ya Allah. Safeguard our men folk, Ya Allah. Help us to learn the Quran, Ya Allah. The message of the Quran, Ya Allah. Help us to learn the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Help us to adopt it, put it into practice and teach it to others, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, help us 
dedicate some time to, to learn this religion, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, to put it into practice. Ya Allah, we are Muslimin. We are so fortunate, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we are guilty of not doing enough, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, help us, Ya Allah. Guide us, Ya Allah. Guide us to the straight path, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, there are people on the globe at this moment who are suffering, Ya Allah. Homeless people, Ya Allah. Suffering, those who are suffering, who are suffering due to flooding, due to wars, Ya Allah, due to disease, due to plague, Ya Allah. You have mercy on them, Ya Allah. You have mercy on all of them, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, have mercy on all of us as well, Ya Allah. The day you take us away, take us away smiling, Ya Allah. Take us away with the shahada on our tongues, Ya Allah. We have heard from the messenger that whoever passes away with the shahada, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, on their tongues, they will enter paradise without reckoning, Ya Allah, make us from amongst them. Ya Allah, make us from amongst them. Ya Allah, help us. Help us to be good to our wives and our husbands, Ya Allah. Our children, our parents, our uncles, Ya Allah. Help us solve problems, Ya Allah. Don't make us create problems, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, make us the best of people, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, grant us a light that we can walk with to see the path, Ya Allah. Help us to distinguish between right and wrong, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, keep us away from bad company and bad friends, Ya Allah. Help us to give up the bad friends that we have, Ya Allah. And help us to associate with those who are good people, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we ask you all the goodness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has asked you. And we seek protection from all the evil that he has sought protection from. Anta al-musta'an alayka al-balaq wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-aliy al-azim. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.